Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am so excited to introduce you today to Lashwanda Moore. She has so many things that she has accomplished in her life. I just want you to listen very closely to what I share with you now, because you're going to be absolutely blown away by her credentials. And then you're going to be even more blown away by what she's going to share with us today. So Lashawanda is a speaker, a business strategist an organizational development consultant, a retired engineer of a Fortune 500 company, and a direct sales business coach. She is the founder of Elevate Success, LLC, and franchise owner of Launch Entertainment Park in Virginia. As a certified professional energy leadership coach, She's skilled at taking what seems to be an insurmountable experience or chaotic situation and working with her clients to extract valuable results that impact the bottom line. She uses her authenticity and passion to help clients go from feeling insignificant and undervalued to respected and a recognized asset in their family, work, and community. I don't know about you guys, but that that just touched my heart that touched my soul right there but we still have more because owning your bold factor and bold is b-o-l-d factor is just one of the many success tools that lashawanda employs in coaching others to unlock their potential and break through to their next level welcome lashawanda thank you kathy it's such an honor to be here i appreciate the invitation Oh my gosh. I am so excited to talk with you. Um, let's just start. We have so much to talk about. Let's start with um, something you mentioned to me and something you have in your hands right now, which is your book, yes. Recover. Yeah. Recover, A Woman's Journey from Failure to Restoration. And you mentioned that that is a journey that you went through. So can you talk a little bit about that journey and about the book itself? Because that book is, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, that book is going to be on my list of things I'm going to be given for a Christmas present this year. Oh, I love it. I love it, Kathy. <laughs> sure. So Recover was birth from a very difficult time that I went through in my life where I got so depressed and so down on myself and my ability to get out of the situation I was in in my career that I just kind of wanted to take myself out of here. And so one time during my meditation that morning, you know, I spent time with the Lord and just kind of do some devotionals. Uh, he said, write, just write. And I want you to write in your pain so that people can feel you when they read the words off of the page. And I'm like, you know, I've always wanted to write a book, but this was never the book that I thought I was going to write, Kathy. I wanted to write something in direct sales. Well, needless to say, I wrote every morning for 30 days and then it sat there for a couple of years because I was still trying to recover from being so torn and broken. And as I continue to re be restored, I mean, this took a couple of years to get through this restoration. It was, I started writing this book in 2017 and it was published June 1st of 2020. That's wow. how long it took me to really wrap my arms around a true healing of myself. And so on June 1st at 11, 1149 when I pressed the button there was a release it was scary as I'll get out because this is a very vulnerable piece of work like I'm really giving pieces of myself in here that are private and also very heavy 
Uh, so when I pressed that button, June 1st, 1149, that was the last portion of restoration that I needed so that I could take my situation, my mess, and turn it into a message that other people could use, that other people can see. If I can make it, you can make it. Wow, that is so powerful. And you you shared with me a little bit about how um, you recommend people go through the book. Could you talk about that a little bit? Because that is very powerful, how, how you have this book set up. You know, that is such a key point. So this book is 31 days of encouragement and inspiration. So there's day one, right? And you read a little snippet of my story. And I may couple it with some biblical reference, either a a reference to a character or just some biblical reference. Then there's a prayer and scripture, but then there's space to write. There are question prompts to answer because I don't want you to get caught up in my story. I want you to see what is your story. So by the time you're finished this in 31 days, you have gone through your own journey of restoration you probably didn't even know you had or needed. And it's broken up into three parts. The first part is about feeling the pain. I remember when I was going through what I was going through, I wanted to be out of the pain quick, but I couldn't. And so sometimes we feel guilty or we feel like something's wrong with us because we're feeling so hurt and we're so down. And so the first part of it is about being okay and giving yourself grace and space to feel pain. The second part is, all right, everything happens for a reason. So what is being pruned from me, shedded, that will not serve me in my future work? Because everything happens to grow us and to make us stronger and to make us better for the next step or the next level in our life. So second part is pruning. What is God trying to tell you? And then the third part is my favorite part because I am so much about solutions is how do we turn that mess I went through into a message that serves other people? And so you really take a ramp up journey, but I have seen people buy this book to support me because they love me and I appreciate them. I thank them for this. And then I've seen people who will start to read it. And because this in the beginning, they're like, oh, I don't feel any shame or I don't feel any pain. And they don't make it to the rest of the the book. But what I've been trying to get people to understand is this book may not be for you in the moment that you're in right now, but you know, there is somebody else hurting that's not talking. Oh yeah. You know who they are, grab it and do it with them. So there is an accountability covenant actually in the very beginning before you even get started of how to get the most out of this book. And it's my covenant to do it with somebody else. So Mm. there's accountability and there's conversation and safety created among people. And so as we're going through it, you talk about it. And you're like, you know what? I never knew I had some things going on with me, but this brought my, opened my eyes and, and then it creates a place for the other person to dialogue. And then when you get through it mm-hmm. together, you experience the ramp up. Mm-hmm. Well, you just gave me an idea. You know, um, I have a community of women who are high level virtual assistants, which I call virtual experts. And they have been toying with the idea of doing a book club for a while, but nobody ever got, you know, Mm -hmm. underneath it. Sounds like your book would be an ideal book to go through as a group. Everybody has a copy of the book. We each go through is, am I thinking about that correctly? Do you think that's a good idea? You are absolutely on to something. That is my hope and my prayer that this becomes a small group talking piece study yes, and that yeah. that each day you know and you know each week that the small group meets or however ever frequently mm-hmm. there's a discussion around what was read and what was shared and what was learned what was brought out what right. was exposed all of that and there's even because my focus is on leadership right the last part and take turning your message into your message is is some things to help in leadership because that's been part of my challenge, my leadership journey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think you're on to something. 
It well, be um, as soon as I get off this call, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be reaching out to my uh, coaches on my team and going, okay, who wants to do this? How are we going to make this happen? Um, because this is a 31 day journey that we yeah. can be on together as we go through your book. And we could meet like four or five times, four or five weeks, go through it together. And it will be even more powerful than if we just did it all by ourselves. It would be, and it would close out this year with put a bow on 2020. I'm loving it. I am loving it. And I would be honored to come in and introduce it. You know, maybe <gasps> kick oh it off. Oh my gosh. Like we do a oh virtual room, kick it off. And I share just how it, how it came about for me, you know, and then what my prayer is for all of you all, you know? Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I, I'm going to be booking you when we stop this because <laughs> I just had a great idea on who I'm going to invite in this, what, how we're going to do it. Oh, Lash Lashawanda, thank you. <laughs> this is so, so powerful. I just got chills all over my body. You know, Ooh. life has a way of throwing us some curveballs sometimes and it knocks us down. Mm -hmm. I don't know any if anybody under the sound of my, my voice has never been through that hold on because I, I firmly believe that we all go through those knockdown moments in our lives whatever mm -hmm. the cause might be but it's mm -hmm. in those moments where if we can just get through the going through see I actually wanted to take my life so one of my passions is the mental health space yes and I I wanted to, so I have such a history around the whole suicidal thing um, because I actually attempted in the 11th grade and didn't succeed wow. and so I knew that I didn't succeed because God had a purpose and plan for myself you know for my life right but when I was going through this and I have four children and I felt like I was messing them up I was messing up my my husband I, you know, my relationship like I'm messing up everywhere. So why don't I just disappear? And God said, no, mm -hmm. you tried that before. And I told you no, because I had some work for you. And it got to a point, Kathy, where I was like, listen, God, I can no longer take it anymore. Something has to happen. So in August of 2018, doing the 15th year anniversary for my husband and I, we normally go away together for our anniversary. Well, this time mm -hmm. we went away, but separately. I went to the oh. mountains of Virginia and he took the kids and they drove down to Louisiana to be with his family. He went and got loved on by his family. I went and got loved on by God, by myself for four nights and five days. And wow. during that time, Kathy, the first day I set intentions for the week and what I was expecting to walk away with. And I didn't want to leave there without walking away with some sort of healing or some sort of encouragement because mm -hmm. I was at a point where I was praying for him to take me out of here. But he mm -hmm. was like, you got children, you can't go. And that, that first day, first full day, he spoke so clearly to me. And I actually put what he told me in the appendix of this book. So you guys will get a chance to read that. Oh, wow. And he loved on me so much. And he told me, don't you ever think about taking your life again, because you are my mouthpiece. And I need you to take your story, your situations and be very transparent so that other people have hope and see that if you can make it, they can too. And another thing he showed me is so many people are suffering silently. I thought I was the problem and only Lashawanda with a name like Lashawanda could get herself <laughs> into stuff like what you've gotten yourself into, <laughs> right? I felt like I was the only one, like surely none of my friends could ever experience anything like this. And do you know that thing that he gave me to speak or, or he gave me, I had a speaking mm -hmm. engagement that Saturday when I came from the mountains and I was like, so God, Thank you for, for everything. So now what do you want me to speak about at this event? They've asked me to speak about women in business. He said, mm -hmm. I want you to tell them what I told you. And I was like, what? That was for me. It was very personal. He was like, I want you to tell them what I told you. That Saturday morning, 100 women in the room, 
he made me say what he gave me, which is in appendix A. And after it, people came up to me. The, the room was tore up. They came up to me like, you were all in my business. I thought I was the one. <laughs> and he goes, see, I told you, you weren't the only one. And so I'm committed yeah. to break the silence. One in four adults are suffering with mental illness. Oh, yeah. And, you, and, and many of us don't even know it. Right. Right. And so I just break into silence, Kathy. Yeah. It gets me in trouble. Uh, it gets me in trouble. It is so work. important though. <laughs> it is so important though, because um, and and I have shared with people many times, um, my family has a history of mental illness. My brother is a paranoid schizophrenic. Um m- many people in my my um aunts, um, other people have killed themselves. Um, I myself uh, was in uh, such a deep depression, a clinical depression until about the age of 30 when I finally got help. And like you, I thought there was something just wrong. Honestly, you know what I thought, Lashwanda? I thought everybody felt like I did. You thought nobody felt like you did. And I thought everybody felt like I did until yeah. I started asking people because I, I would tell people, I'm like, you know, I know on the outside, I seem all happy and bubbly, but on the inside, I've never been happy more than five minutes at one time in my entire life. I have a deep, dark hole in my soul. And people would just be like, that can't be true. You don't seem like that. And I'm like, it is very true. And I was really lucky because I did get that help that I needed. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like that anymore. Um, But without that help, Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have. And my brother is very lucky in that he had me and um, my mom and dad at the time to support him throughout his journey. And he is still able to live alone. He's able to drive a car. And what makes me the happiest is when he tells me, I love my life. Because he tried to kill himself many times Mm -hmm. and was in mental wards many times but he's evened out. He's gotten the help he needed. And so there is help out there and there is yeah. life after this kind of stuff. And in fact, you're like, you can, like my brother, he appreciates his life so much because of what he's gone through. And so do I, and it sounds like you do also. Absolutely. And so now my life commitment is to help other people have hope in, and to see themselves victorious in any situation. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. I love that. So let's shift gears just a little bit because I want to talk about those leadership challenges that you mentioned that you faced Mm -hmm. and why you help the people you do um, that might also be facing those kind of challenges. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So I guess, where do I start, Kathy? I think I've always been that girl who was the lead, you know, when you're in those little science project groups in grade school. Like I've always been like this innate leader. Um, and you kind of, you you just kind of grow up like, oh my God, I, here I am again, I'm leaving again, I'm leaving again. Well, I finally got a chance to be a people leader in my, my corporate job. And I really didn't know what that meant. I just, you know, went with what I thought I knew. But I had so much to learn and so many things, you know, as you become a people leader in corporate America, there's so much influence that you have. But I think what I have struggled with is people is creating followership and people leading me because they I'm sorry, me, people following me because they (laughs) want to, not because Mm -hmm. they have to. Right. Mm -hmm. And so. It's like, how do I work with people and meet them where they are so that they aren't intimidated or or threatened by how I say things? And um, so my my leadership journey has really been about understanding and appreciating people and recognizing that not everybody's ready for everything that I have right away. Like giving people space and grace and listening to people. And so one of the things that I uh, did 
after experiencing some of the challenges um, in my people leadership, when I ended up in, you know, in, in, in trouble a couple of times, you know, it's like, hey, what is it that I'm trying to learn? You know, what do I need to learn here? And mm -hmm. the bold factor came out of my leadership challenges. So B is about getting back to basics because I started to lose myself in my leadership journey, trying to prove that I could do it. And you know, when you're always trying to prove yourself or striving for something or trying to meet people's expectations and standards, you almost forget who you are, what your expectations and standards are because you're caught up trying to, and every time leadership changes, there's a whole different level of expectations, new expectations and standards. So it's just this constant strive and pull and, you know, drive. And as mm -hmm. you're pushing and pulling and striving and driving, things are being pushed further and further away. And so the B came about when me having to rediscover who Lashawanda truly is, get back to the basics. And that's really defining my why. So I went through a process of having to define, why do I get up every morning? Why, what is it that drives me, inspires me? What is it that causes me to breathe when mm -hmm. I don't even want to because I'm so committed to this thing? And so B is about getting back to the basics and discovering your why. O is owning your strengths. So what are you good at? I forgot what I was good at, Kathy, because I'm trying to to meet everybody else's stuff, I forgot. And so it's like, what is it that you're good at and do a whole lot of it? Every successful person knows what they're good at and they do a lot of it. The stuff they're not good at, mm -hmm. they delegate it out to somebody else. And then mm -hmm. L, listening more and talking less, like not always feeling like I gotta have my voice in the room to prove that I know things, mm -hmm. but listening more to people and perspectives and what they're saying. And then D is don't be afraid of feedback. When the feedback comes, put the mirror up and see, okay, what can I learn from this? Oh, yeah. And at the same time, not being afraid to give feedback to other people, the people, your peers and your boss, et cetera, right? And, and so all it's like leadership is like this whole well-rounded thing of perception and perspectives that you kind of have to mm. master where you get to a point where people want to follow you, not because they have to, because they really, truly want to. And so my bold factor principle really helps ground me when I'm, I'm getting caught up. And the bold factor is not about me. Even though I say own my own, own my bold factor or own your bold mm -hmm. factor, it's really not about you. It's about other people. Because your why is not about you. Your why is about others. Your mm -hmm. strengths are for others. Mm -hmm. Listening is for others. Mm -hmm. Not being afraid of feedback is for others. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. And when you are about others in, in leadership, when you are about serving mm -hmm. others, people follow you because they want to. When you cancel out your agenda and trying to measure up to everybody else and just focus on the people, and serving in the way that you should be serving, then they mm -hmm. follow you because they want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that so much. Um, and I love the way you talked about it to begin with as if it was about you. And then you pivoted it <laughs> in a powerful way and went, yeah, so this really isn't about you. This is really about others. And that is so true because by serving others is how we really become so happy and successful and fulfilled yeah i mean if you think about people who are in leadership that you really love you know you kind mm -hmm. of say hey that's one of my favorite people you probably like them so much because they are influence influential but mm -hmm. if you were to list like all of the things you love about them i'm mm -hmm. willing to bet 80 to 90 percent of the things you list are going to be about their character not yeah. about their skills no. right that, you're right. And if we're all into ourselves, we're so we're thinking about ourselves, our career, our this, mm -hmm. our this, our mm -hmm. this. It's very mm -hmm. hard to leave from a place where people feel your heart. Oh yeah. And I could totally see the difference between when I first started my leadership journey to mm -hmm. where I am now. 
at first it was about, oh my God, my career and I'm moving up trying to be a senior leader in the company, right? Mm -hmm. To now it's like, let me help develop these people that are right here underneath my voice, underneath my tutelage to be their best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that who you work with are high potential, intelligent women who have hit a ceiling and struggle to get past where they are. So for example, you gave me an example of maybe they've gotten feedback from their employer on something that's holding them back and you help them overcome that, get past that ceiling. And if what you discover together is that they're ready to transition into becoming an entrepreneur, you help them with that. If not, you help them get past that ceiling in the corporate world. Am I stating that correctly? Yes, Kathy. Yes. That's one of my passions. And it all, to be honest with you, it all is rooted around that first thing that be back to the basics and helping people discover who they are and then what they're good Mm -hmm. at and making sure that Mm -hmm. it's a right fit where they are. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we could be in a wrong fit. I chose a career in engineering. Mm -hmm. I can't, I, I, I don't regret a single thing in my life. Like my engineering career was amazing. I did Mm -hmm. so much, accomplished so much, traveled the world, et cetera, with a a wonderful company. But at Mm -hmm. the end of the day, it wasn't that right fit for fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So I like to work with high potential women who might be struggling where they are, but really helping them get to the back to the basics and identify Mm -hmm. their strengths, what they're good at, what they enjoy, those kinds of things to determine Mm -hmm. if they are in the right place. And if they are, then how do we navigate? What skills do we need to build upon? Is it negotiate? I mean, uh, networking, connecting with people, et cetera, building up your interviewing skills, building up your resume, right? Whatever it is that might be necessary Mm -hmm. to help brand themselves where they are or get them Mm -hmm. out where they should be. Yeah. Well, uh, one thing that really hit home for me when you talked about that is um, I had gotten feedback from my employer. Um, I too worked for a Fortune 500 company for almost 20 years and I was a marketing manager and um, I didn't know what a marketing manager was until I started doing it. I thought it would be, you know, involved with a lot of people and doing a lot of, you know, outgoing yeah. things because I love to do that. And yeah. what my job ended up being was doing a lot of what if spreadsheets. I was stuck behind a desk all day long running spreadsheets. And I can't even tell you how not me that was. Yeah. <laughs> and so I went to my boss when other people were getting promoted and I wasn't. And I asked him, why am I not getting promoted? And he told me it was because I laughed and smiled too much. And then unless I changed that about myself, I was never going to go anywhere. And I was 40 at the time. Lashwanda. Wow. And I really went back to my cubicle and I thought, okay, how do I do this? How do I tamp down my energy? How do I tamp down my joy? How do I tamp down my spirit? And my body decided not to let me do that. And I started getting sick. I started getting migraines, ended up in the ER. And Mm -hmm. once that started, I was like, I have to get out of here. Yeah. And I feel like I was really lucky that my body told me that because I would, would have tried to, to, to figure something else out. Yeah. So I wish you would have been in my life back then. (laughs) Cause I could, I could have really used somebody like you. And quite honestly, I was, I was searching for somebody like you, but this was like 1994. And I don't think there were a whole lot of you out there then Lashwanda. <laughs> but you know what? You had everything you needed though, inside of you to make it through that. And you made it through it, you know? And that's one of the things that I believe that everybody has what they need inside of them. Even if it's the wisdom to go get help from somebody yes. else right? You have what you need inside of you to get through those kinds of situations. Mm -hmm. I so can relate to you, Kathy, in in Mm -hmm. that kind of feedback that you got. I mean, I've been told that my energy will blow people out of the water. So I need to temper (laughs) it down. Um, You know, don't ever temper it down, Lashwanda. I love your energy. 
Thank you. And to be honest with you, I tried. And that's the thing that started to beat up my confidence and kill my spirits, right? And, yes. and take away the fulfillment in life. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I don't, I, I mean, everybody has to go through their journey, right? In their mm-hmm. way. But what grieves me is to see when life takes a toll of people and take them too far down so it's like can I catch you from getting too far down yes right because you know when you mention high potential intelligent women is who you want to work with I remember back when this happened to me and literally um I felt like my soul had been sucked sucked out of me I felt like a little piece of dirt on the bottom of my boss's shoe I did yeah. not feel high potential. I did not feel intelligent. I would never, if you had said, I'm going to work with high potential intelligent women, I would have never said, that's me. I'm there. And guess what? Thank goodness. I just decided I am not going to stay here. I really believe I have more to offer because now I know I am a high potential intelligent woman. Yes. And I'm so, <laughs> I'm so thankful you got out of there. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if you had enough to know that wasn't a good place for you to be to kill your spirits. And you know what else is so interesting too about um, the journeys that we go through as women, you know, for those of us that are mothers and wives, when mm-hmm. we go through our deep stuff and, and we, mm-hmm. so when you're going through hurt, hurt people, hurt people. So oh, yes. With that, the people who experienced that time that you were in your stuff hurting, Mm -hmm. they got hurt. And so while Mm. the woman has to go through her restoration period, the Mm -hmm. family has to go through their recovery and restoration period as well. Oh, wow. So this thing is deep and it's so much more because again, it's not our lives are not about us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's about everybody else around us and the people we come in contact with. So then there's this whole, I think there needs to be a sequel to recover a woman's journey from failure to restoration. And now it's like a family's journey from a woman's failure. <laughs> to I think you're right. Absolutely. We need that. I can tell you I'm my family right and I now. need it. I'm my family and right I now. definitely need it. <laughs> there we go. Yay. I only teach so, what I know. I only teach practical. <laughs> I only teach from yes. my experience. So I got to figure this thing out. Then check me later. <laughs> okay. We will. Cause I know you're going to figure it out. Um, Thank you. So I want to come back to the high potential intelligent women who would, who were like me and it sounds like maybe like you at the low spot in your life where mm-hmm. you might not raise your hand and say, yes, I am that woman. But how, how can somebody tap into that and go, uh, is there a little, are you listening? You know, like you listened to God and he told you, are you listening to God, the higher power, whoever you believe in? And are they telling you there, there is more that you are meant to do in this world? Is that what you recommend? Or is there what do you recommend for those women who are like, you know, maybe I got something more here. I don't know. Yeah. So what do I recommend for the women who aren't sure they're high potential? Is that what your question yeah. is? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Their confidence has been beaten down um, ah, okay. by, yeah, by, you know, yeah. life, by yeah. bosses, by, <laughs> you know, COVID. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. By having homeschool, whatever it is, there's so many things that can beat us down these days and yes. make you doubt yourself. Yeah, so several things. And it depends on the level of depth or severity that the person finds mm-hmm. themselves in. Okay. If you're at a mm-hmm. at a place where you're in um a deep depressive state that could be clinical, you, you need to get some help. Right. You need to get um, someone who's trained. I am not a therapist. Right. But you need to get someone who's trained to help you from that. Um, But I always recommend that people have a relationship with a higher power, a higher calling beyond themselves. And for me, that is God. Right. Um, My from my Christian faith, 
the very first thing that I do every morning before I pick up the phone, before I read text, before I get on social media, before I put anything dirty into my head, I put inspiration. I read a, a devotional, uh, something that's going to inspire me and be a safe place for everything else to land. Okay. So that's the very first thing. You need a relationship. A relationship. Uh oh, I can't hear you. Uh oh, can you hear me, Kathy? Okay. <clears throat> Yes, so the first thing for me is to make sure that you have a relationship with a higher calling, a higher power. And again, for me, that's God. And I spend each morning putting something inspirational into my mind before I dirty it up with anything like social media or emails or text messages or whatever. And then the second thing is exercise. Exercise is very, very important for overall wellness that is physical and mental wellness. It helps replace all of those cortisol, stress hormones, those chemicals in your body that don't serve you. The exercise helps release those things and put some of those really happy chemicals and happy hormones, dopamines and all of those, I don't know all the means, right? Cause I'm not that, I'm not the PhD yet. One of these days I might get my PhD. But um, exercise is the second thing that I do. The other thing is to surround yourself with people who you strive to be. Surround yourself with people who are progressive, people who are doing things with their lives. If you look around to your close circle and they aren't going anywhere and you have a desire to go, you know you, know you want to do better, do more, have more. You got to associate yourself with other people that are doing more and better. Iron sharpens iron. And then the other thing is play, laughter. I've started to just play with my kids. Part of my restoration and recovery of my family is to enjoy them more. So I might sit down on the floor and play jacks with them. Teach them old school jacks. I love that. I love old school jacks. That is so fun. We need to play. <laughs> And then, you know, just really enjoying them. They're funny. They're absolutely funny. And so laughing at them. So playing laughter. And then lastly, find fulfillment outside of your nine to five. Because sometimes our nine to five isn't cutting it. And we're not ready to exit just yet. Hey, buddy. We're not ready. To <laughs> this, is, this is my dog, Max. <laughs> he knows there's a podcast going on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. But, you know, finding fulfillment outside of your nine to five, because you need your tank to be filled up so that it spill over into your nine to five. I used to sell jewelry. I sold jewelry for 13 years where I did jewelry parties all around the tri-state area. And then I built a team of over 300 women. And we I did, I coached, I did jewelry parties, I put on big rallies and I had so much fun and I was enjoying getting the recognition. And this is why I'm a big proponent of direct sales because it helped me personally, interpersonally and professionally. And do you know my company started to see my leadership abilities and then put me in the program to be developed into a senior leader from wow. my focus and redirection onto something else that filled yeah. my tank, and then it spilled over. So to that woman who's just struggling and just don't know if they're gonna be able to keep it up, they don't even know their high potential anymore because they've been beat up, relationship with a higher calling, spend time every morning reading, meditating, and journaling what you hear them saying to you, exercise, mm -hmm. play and laughter, the finding friends and being around people who sharpen you. And lastly, fulfillment outside of your nine to five. To me, those five key things are, are things that can really help you get on your way. And of course, lastly, they can come work with me and I'll teach them how to do all of those five things. <laughs> That's right. Yay. So if you are listening to this right now and you're like, I am that woman she's talking about, then how do they get a hold of you, Lashwanda? Thank you. 
So you may go to they learn more about you. So go ahead. No worries. You may go to my website, lashawandamore.com, L-A capital S H A W A N D A more M O O R E dot com. And you can click on a scheduling a discovery session. It's a complimentary session for us to just chit chat and me learn a little bit more about you and what's going on. And then together we can determine if it's a divine alignment for us to work together. So lashawandamore.com. And for my book, you can go to my products link on my website and order recover, or you can go to bit.ly forward slash recover book. And you can get recover. And I, if you order it from my website, I will sign it. And I also send you a couple of gifts as well. Wow, that sounds awesome. You got a lot going on there. Thank you so much for being on here today. And all of that information, those links will be in our show notes. Thank you so much for having me, Kathy. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm-hmm.